Well, if I can say one thing, it's a slightly better finale than Halloween ends. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is a brand new 2023 action-adventure film directed by James Mangold, starring Harrison Ford, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, and Mads Mikkelsen. And I've already said this many times, I am a huge Indiana Jones fan. Probably a bigger Indiana Jones fan than I am a Star Wars fan, and I fucking love Star Wars, but Indiana Jones has just always been my thing. So, yeah, I was very excited for this movie. Did it deliver? Eh, let's just get into it. Starting off with the good. And obviously, like with every other movie in this franchise, Harrison Ford is really great as Indy. Uh, he's obviously aged, obviously way older than he was in even Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So, therefore, he's not able to do a bunch of gigantic action set pieces like he used to be able to but the uh, charm and the wit is still there albeit to a lesser extent but Harrison Ford still sells it very well um, and it's mainly helped by the fact that Harrison Ford loves the character of Indy he loves playing Indy unlike uh, Han Solo but uh, that's a different story but I really loved him as Indy here. Um, probably my least favorite performance from him as Indy, but it's still really, really great uh, seeing him back in the uh, back in the role one last time. And then you have Phoebe Waller-Bridge in this movie, and uh, I actually really liked her in this movie. Um, I've only ever seen her one other time in, I think, Solo. I think that's the only other movie I've seen her in. I didn't care for the character that she played in Solo, but she did a really great job here. She's got that sassiness to her. Uh, the banter between her and Indy is absolutely amazing. I love their chemistry together, uh, seeing how they care for each other uh, since she's his goddaughter. Also, it was really nice to see um, John Rice davies back as Sala, even if it's just one or two scenes in the movie. It was really great to see him one more time as well. And Mads Mikkelsen, he shows up to work. He does a fantastic job. Mads Mikkelsen always does a fantastic job. Uh, I never worry when Mads Mikkelsen is cast in a movie because you know he's going to give it his all. Uh, but I'll get a little bit more to the character he plays later on. But Mads Mikkelsen does do a really good job uh, as he always does. Um, and then the story here, it's it's okay. Uh, the best part about the movie was the f opening 20 minutes where it shows young Indy uh, fighting Nazis uh, back in World War II. That was a really great opening to the movie. I wish that was the whole movie, honestly. Uh, but that's aside from my point. Action sequences, and because of... Harrison Ford's age, they had to limit themselves on the action sequences, but the action sequences we get are pretty good, and uh, there's a really great uh, car chase sequence in Morocco uh, in the movie. Really, really great seeing that whole scene. And there's also a small sense of closure with some characters that have appeared in this franchise. Uh, not getting into spoilers, but... Uh, there's a little bit of closure with some characters. Uh, some characters I would have loved to see come back do not come back, though. But uh, that's a different story for a different day. And obviously, John Williams' final score, really great. Uh, that's because it's John Williams. He's the master of film scores. And he does an amazing job here, uh, as always. Uh, but that's about all for the good, on to the bad. And... Unfortunately, there's a lot of stuff in this movie that just left me not sour, just kind of, is that it? And, yeah, this this was kind of a disappointing movie for me. Uh, I wanted to love it. First of all, the biggest issue with this movie is the runtime. This is 2 hours and 22 minutes, and... 
it does not need to be that long. They could have trimmed about 20 minutes off of this movie, and it would have been just fine the way it was. But that is, that's how it is with studios these days. They want to make long-ass movies to... I don't know why, but here we are getting two and a half to three hour movies every single week these days. But uh, yeah, the runtime really drags it down for me. And although I do love the opening of this movie, the de-aging technology still is not there. It just looks so fake in a lot of parts and especially with 80 year old Harrison Ford his voice does not match young Indy anymore I'm sorry it, it just doesn't and then you have the villain Voller played by Mads Mikkelsen and I already said Mads Mikkelsen does a great job I never doubted that but Voller just felt like uh, uh, he was just kind of there because the 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 indie franchise is one of the most consistent in terms of villains, but this villain was just kind of weak and honestly forgettable. And that's just a big pet peeve of mine when a big movie brings in Mads Mikkelsen, one of the greatest modern day actors, to play a character and then barely does anything with him. It happened with Doctor Strange. It happened with uh, Chaos Walking. It happened with Secrets of Dumbledore. It happened here. They just don't know how to use Mads Mikkelsen for whatever reason. But he always does his best. So I have to commend him for that. But his character was just forgettable in my opinion. And then you get this, this kid that joins Indy and Helena. Uh, around the halfway point of the movie did not like this character at all uh, he was just really annoying it felt like they were just trying to remake short round when really they could have just brought Ki Hui Kwan back for a couple scenes since he's making a comeback uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a, either way and then one of the biggest crimes that this movie commits is that it's boring. There are a lot of boring moments in this movie that just don't do it for me. And also the artifact that they're chasing in this movie. I uh, wasn't a fan. And for a movie directed by James Mangold, the guy who directed Logan, one of the greatest grand finales in cinematic history, the finale of this movie just played it a little too safe, in my opinion. That's just how I feel about it. Yeah, that's about all for the bad on the final thoughts. I did not hate Dial of Destiny. I wanted it to be better than it was, but I still had fun with it. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is very flawed, kind of disappointing, but I still had a fun enough time with it for the most part and I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. So that was my thoughts on Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Have you seen this movie yet? Let me know down in the comments what you thought about it if you have seen it. And as always if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you all next time.